Good afternoon, everyone. Shout out to Matt and Maria showing me a side of the Grand Solar Minimum right in front of me the entire time that I didn't see. Breaking some red ground and then breaking bread at the table. One of the most important papers you will ever dissect. Iron spin crossover, ferroperioclase, Earth's lower mantle, stretch and compress, the transition adding an element, blue high spin, red low spin, center colors, black center line, like a change of state in cymatics and when it happens, that green line, volume expansion. The invigoration convection increasing volcanoes and earthquakes. Hot spots potentially from these seismic signatures. My question is heading to a grand solar minimum. Lower electrical activity is going to trigger the same exact mechanisms. That asthenosphere meeting the lower crust, magnetic field lines, and Earth's electric circuit. They can't explain these luminous events. They can't explain the uptick in the ionospheric discharges. This does 1,800 miles below you. Economists and Wall Street are sounding the alarm. Investors are ignoring the parallels between 1929, 99, 2007, and today. We are absolutely in the everything bubble, and investors are now betting on the Fed, threatening to raise rates six to seven times through 2024. If the debt ceiling is raised, there will be an economic catastrophe. Learn how simple it is to add physical gold and silver to your portfolio ahead of the rise in inflation and predicted price rises. Patriot Gold Group has the No Fee for Life IRA, where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold and silver, and you may be eligible for the No Fee for Life IRA. Call 1-800-356-4470 and get a free investor guide today. And with the knowledge that Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs top rated gold IRA dealer from 2016 to present, click on the link in the description box below for more information. And now on with the video. Saw this article off Nature here Seismological Expressions of Iron Spin Crossover, Ferroperioclase in the Earth's Lower Mantle. I was thinking ferroelectrics when they got into the article here because the first couple paragraphs will rope you right in. If you stretch or compress just a few nanometer thick layers of magnetic material, you can change the layer's magnetic properties. Since we're in an electromagnetic system and Earth has a magnetic field, I was wondering how these work in conjunction. And they also use this technique, if any of you are involved in sound, improving the medium, recording properties. A few nanometers thick. And I thought, well, we're talking about 1,200 to 1,600 miles of a layer of this, as this changing spin state is Earth's alchemy, and also the electrical discharge. If one nanometer thick can change... The effects of your medium and recording properties. How many nanometers thick is 1,200 miles? It brings you into the 1 quadrillion, 900 trillion, 212 billion range. Definitely would be some effect beneath our feet. So the article goes into the Earth's lower mantle, right where it touches the outer core. You're going to get this mixing of magnesium, ferrosilicate, ferropericlase as they switch atoms and molecules in the lattice. And these minerals in state are going to remain stable until they hit this transition state. So the stability is the top right, but once they start that phase state change, they're going to switch into a quadrupole. Suddenly the octahedron can compress 3% or expand up to 8%. Massive changes in volume. So to put it into perspective, this compression curve, we want to focus in on the blue, which is the high 
spin, and then the red and one value at 100% low spin. Without pressure, they remain stable. Configurations here that you would see in low spin and high spin states. So as this pressure increases, so does the volume change and the seismic velocity. The spin crossover, building or losing something from the lattice, as it does, that green top left is what you're looking at. Stable state until it hits that point when the crossover begins, thermodynamics. Then you get the volume change and the volume expansion. This is where the ferroelectrics take center stage. Now to bring it into a visual format, blue is the high spin state, red is the low spin state. You're just separated by an energy barrier, but one that crosses that black line transition curve right there with the aqua and the yellows, it's going to look a little something like cymatics when it changes form. Similar in the chemistry, pressures, expansion, elasticity, and something's pushing. Where is that going to go? Transition visible, the blue K, also in the equations. The thermal conductivity, that expansion wave, and we're talking about two sets of ionically enhanced minerals, the magnesium and the ferrite or the ferropericlase. Visually to represent this spin state change, when the harmonics change or the electrical input changes, the state changes. And coming into a grand solar minimum, we know the electrical state of our solar system is changing. And I think that's why this paper is coming out right now. They're talking about geodynamic simulations, but in the real world, what this means is that spin crossover configuration invigorates the Earth's mantle and tectonic plate motions, which means for me and you standing on the surface, more earthquakes, more volcanoes. I think this is the catalyst right here that explains why there's an uptick in volcanic activity in grand solar minimums. Now, they're talking about punch-through points in the center of a plate, not on a plate boundary, which would be the ring of fire, but the punch-through points, these volcanic hot spots, if you will. So with the map here, you might think there'd be more tectonic activity, earthquakes, etc., where these locations would be as we progress toward 2023 and 24, along with the volcanoes. And we could go right down the list and start checking off many different areas. I'm just interested about Australia. If that starts going off, this would verify the paper's results here, as well as Cascadia. But we shall see mapping this out moving forward. And another paper related to this, 2004, Electronic Transitions in Perovskite. We're talking about electromagnetic effects once again. So as the sun steps down, our Earth needs to equalize a charge with that. Think of these reds as two different cycles inbound with a different electrical signature. So I'm looking at the asthenosphere where it meets the crust of the planet. All of these volume changes and energy barrier crossovers in this paper are way deep in the mantle, way down, touching the outer core all the way up through the asthenosphere. Now what? We're getting this boundary layer right where the crust and the mantle meet. So would you think there would be electrical enhanced effects? We're talking about a planet with a magnetic field going way into the deep, deep, deep and meeting at the inner core. So obviously it's going to follow the magnetic field lines out. So these termination points of P wave at the mantle crust, would that work its way out into the Earth's electric circuit up to the ionosphere, because there's an enormous amount of luminous events going on that can't be explained in the magnitude, size, and frequency of it. Take that little blue dot, run it all the way to the Earth's core, and then could you run it out to the ionosphere connecting back to the sun? Would that be a completed circuit from core to star? What the heck was that luminous event? I think we just explained it. Perhaps we need to get ready for global crop losses as weather systems shift due to increased electrical activity on our planet's surface as our sun steps down and the earth tries to discharge what it's accumulated over the last 400 years. 
oh, we'll get through this. We always have. It's just this time of 8 billion people and the crops grown on the planet aren't going to match that. You're going to be on your own for a little while. You might want to get prepared. Long-term storable foods is the first solution you might want to consider. Three-month emergency food supply. My Patriot Supply and Adapt 2030. That link's in the description box below. Great way to support the channel and get your families more grand solar minimum prepared. As well as all the links to the PDFs and research in this video. I do thank you for watching. Hope you got something out of it. Make a little more sense of these electrical phenomena we're seeing across the planet. And I'll see you next time.